Hey guys, Roguru here, and today we will talk about the loops in Lua. So what is a loop? For example, we have some code that runs, and after this code runs, we check if a condition is true or false, and if a condition is true, we run this code again, and if the condition is false, we continue. So here I am in Roblox Studio, and there are three types of loops in Lua. The repeat loop, the for loop, and the while loop. So let's begin by creating a variable known as a. And let's give it a value of 5. Now let's create our first loop. This will be a while loop. In order to create a while loop, we type in while. And then we type in a condition, so while a is less than 10. And then we say do. And then we run the code inside, let's print out a, and then we say a equals a plus 1. So what this code does is, it checks if a is less than 10, 5 is less than 10, and then what it does is, okay, since a is less than 10, let's print out a, and then let's increment a. If you watched my previous video, I told you that to increment something means to add one to it. To, you add a value to itself. So what we're doing here is we're adding one to itself. A is adding one to itself. And if you look at the code and we play, the output will be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So what's happening is this code is run. And then once 1 is added to A, it checks, okay, is 6 less than 10? Because A is now 6. And since it is, we will run this again. And we do this over and over again until A is either equal or greater than 10. So all the code after this loop will be run only after this loop is complete, only after the code is done running this loop. So if we have a print statement saying this is printed after the loop, and we play. We will see first the code runs everything in the loop until the loop is finally done, and then this is printed. So what if you want to get out of this loop earlier? Well, in order to do that, you just use the break function that Lua provides. So what this does is, the code runs through the loop, it says, okay, a is less than 10, we print out a, we add 1 to a, we increment a, but then it says, hey, it says break. So what this does is, it says, okay, I'm done with this loop, I am no longer running the code inside here, let's continue. And then, the code in here will no longer be run, even if the condition is true. So to prove this, let's play. play and 5 and then this is printed after the loop great the break function works so this is used to get out of any kind of loop for a repeat loop or for a loop any loop will work so what is a repeat loop well let's create a repeat loop let's create a variable a known as 10 and then let's create a repeat loop. In order to create a repeat loop, you just type in repeat, and then you type in some code, print a, and then you say a equals a plus 1. And then we say until, well until what? Let's say until a greater than 15. Now let's play this. Boom. It runs up to 15, and then it stops. Well, what's the difference between a while loop? Well, let's say this. Until a is greater than 9. Let's play. It prints out 10. So if you noticed, a is actually greater than 9 already, but it still runs this code. Well, that's what repeat loops are known for. They run the code inside them at least once. Even if the condition is false, it will run the code here at least once, and then it will stop. 
So in this case, what we're doing is we're printing A, and then we add 1 to A, and then we repeat this process until A is greater than 9. So this is what a repeat loop is. Let's close this. The last loop we will learn today is the for loop. Well, what is the for loop? Let's actually delete the variable A since we will not need it. And let's create a for loop. We write out for. And then we do this. We create i. And we give it a value of 1. And let's put the value 10. And then 1. And then do. And then print out i. So you're wondering, hey, where did he get i? What's this 10? What's this 1? What's this 1? Well, what this loop does, what it's known for is, instead of just comparing a value here, we create a variable known as i. We can also call it k if we want. But let's do i. And then we give it a value of 1. And then what this is, is where it's limited. So every time this code runs, this value right here, the third value, is added to i. So once you print out i, 1 is going to be added to i. So you run this once, and then i will be equaling to 2. And then you run it the second time, and then you add 1 again, and so on, until i is greater than 10. So if I play, it's easier if you see it when I play. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the for loop runs through here 10 times. So it runs through here, adds 1 to i, runs it again, adds 1 to i, and so on until i is greater than 10. You can also break out of this loop. 1. Now, why use all these different kinds of loops? Well, each loop is useful for different things. Let me show you an example where I would use a loop. If you are on the Discord for the game I am making, I recently showcased a building system. And how this building system works is, when the player starts building, it sets, it sets the value of building to true, and then it creates a, it has a loop that says, while building is true, so while the player is building, we will position the building block, or in this case our part, in front of the player and according to his mouse position. So we position according to, his pos to the player's position and to his mouse position. And this is all done through a loop. Without a loop, I would never be able to do this. It is very important to know loops, and you will use them plenty of times throughout your scripting career. So the last two things I want to talk about are infinite loops and the wait function. So imagine you want to run some code over and over again for your entire game. So infinite times. Let me give you an example. Imagine you're making a day and night system. For that you have to change the time of day over and over again for the entire game. So for that you would use a loop known as while true do end. So the condition in this while loop is always true. So this will never break unless you use the break function manually. Now usually you wouldn't do this since you always want the code to run over and over again in a while true do. That's why it's really that's why you use it. Now the script the compiler in Roblox, Roblox runs through all of its co code really fast. You blink and you already have 1,000 lines that ran, or even more than 1,000, a million lines. So if you just have a while true do loop that, for example, prints high, in about one second, you will already have 1,000 highs. And what this does is it makes Roblox crash. You never wait, so the compiler runs through this loop so fast that it's exhausted. It can't do it anymore. You run through it like a million times, it cannot run through it anymore. It's, it's too tired. To prevent this, you use something known as the wait function. Wait. So how do you define a wait function? Well, you just write wait, 
and then two parentheses. What this does is it waits a certain time. So for example, if you have wait one, it prints high, it waits one second, and then it prints high again. Waits one second, prints high. Waits one second, prints high. Now, you can also do just wait without anything. This runs about one thirtieth of a second. This waits about for one thirtieth of, of a second. In the future, we will talk about some other wait functions that'll wait one sixtieth of a second, which is about every single frame. This waits one thirtieth. It's still very fast, waits very little. Now, what this does is it just lets the compiler slow down a bit. It lets it say, okay, let me print high, let me, and then do this, and then print high, and then wait one thirtieth of a second, and so on. Wait will be used in many parts of your code, and usually, if you have a loop, you will usually have a wait, unless you want to loop through like 20 things really quickly, then you would probably not have a wait. Weights are also not only used for loops. You can use weights to make particle effects or for UI tweening, and they have so many uses. And you don't just have to wait one second, you can wait for 10 seconds, or 20 seconds, or 30, or 200, just however long you want. Overall, we will be using weights in our future tutorials a bunch of times. Anyways, that was it for today. I highly recommend that you practice loops and different scripting aspects from our previous videos. Try to put them all together. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below the video and I will try my best to reply as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Bye.